The Californian Ideology is the title of an essay written by Richard Barbrook and Andy Cameron, and it describes a doctrine that's based upon digital utopian ideals. Towards the end of the 20th century, computing technology had become advanced enough to act as media, telecommunications, and computing, creating a game-changing platform for people to interact with each other. With the potential for this technology to transform the way people work, live, and play, a new orthodoxy was introduced in the West Coast by a slew of writers, hackers, capitalists, and artists. This would come to be known as the Californian Ideology. As described by Barbara and Cameron, it combined the contrasting ideals of the hippies and the entrepreneurial zeal of the young professionals working in the city, especially in the Silicon Valley area. While this tells the story of how the Californian ideology came to be and spread, the central idea behind it is a sentiment that is still shared by many today, using technology to allow everybody to be able to express themselves freely. Combining ideas of neoliberalism, individualism, and libertarianism, it sought to fight against the power structures of the state and protect the rights and freedoms of individuals. This viewpoint was held universally by proponents of the California ideology in its infancy. However, with this ambiguous and technological deterministic ideal, problems arise. Advocates of information technology believe that this new digital age would create wealth and growth and destroy the old power structures in favor of virtual communities that the new left advocated for. Instead, it strengthened the power of corporations and created social immobility, creating a new elite virtual class. According to Barbrook and Cameron, the companies that create the cyber marketplace and innovate technology consistently depend on a small subsect of people who can research and create original products. This creates an elite class of skilled workers and entrepreneurs who form a sort of cyber aristocracy. This elite class attempts to realize a Jeffersonian democracy, that is, freedom and prosperity for them only brought through the suffering and hard work of others. The digital age with the Californian ideology only brings back the segregation and inequality of the past with digital divides as the techno elite is dominated predominantly by straight white men. Lisa Nakamura discusses this divide by exploring the participation of different races online. By analyzing Pew research studies and exploring cyber cultures, she seeks to see who benefits from the internet and if it really is a tool for everybody. The Californian ideology would, in theory, seek to create a world without privilege or prejudice, allowing people to live free as equal individuals. However, due to the elite virtual class described by Barbara and Cameron, the problems of society carried over to this cyberspace. Nakamura asserts that this racial minorities must become producers of internet content rather than consumers in order to bridge this divide. However, it is not so easily done. Economist Chris Papagiorgio and his colleagues explore the reasons for rising income inequality in our modern world. The results of their studies implies that the main factor for this rising inequality is technological change, as technological progress places a premium on skills, making more advanced jobs higher paying and lower skilled jobs lower paying. This is reflected with issues apparent in the Californian ideology, as the elite virtual class have access to new information technologies and opportunities that others do not. According to Barbrook and Cameron, this technological utopian ideal is built on its blindness and dependence on the social and racial polarization of the society from which it was born. The Californian ideology, despite being about being freed from the privileges and prejudices of society, actually contributes to social inequalities, depicting a deeply pessimistic and repressive vision of the future.